An understanding of culture can emanate from a variety of perspectives, sourced from folk, literary and historical narratives, religious traditions, the built heritage, the rituals of life and living. All of these are engaged with the grand creative process. Locating these rich and multiple dimensions of culture in the context of the natural landscape in which they exist is to see how the elements of nature nourish and preserve the cultural roots of a people. The founding of a village may depend on a host of factors and the period in which it is done can also be speculated by topography, oldest material available through excavation, ethnology of place name, and other means. Pahambir literally means swampy grassland, and this is due to the presence of two swampy areas which used to be the watering holes and bathing places of elephants. One of the water bodies is still existing, and it has been converted into a community pond, while the other has been converted into a paddy field. Now, Pahambir village in Ribhoi district of Meghalaya, a state in the northeastern region of India, was founded by two women who were known as Kakameka Te and Kakameka Air. This follows the practice of tectonomy of the Kasis, which requires that an individual is known after the name of the eldest child. Kakameka Te was of the Marian clan, while Kakameka Air of the Makri, the two principal founding clans of the village. Now, Pahambir, like some villages in the Bhoi area, presents us with a spectacle of a disappearing ancient way, scraped and cleansed by an impatient younger generation who are anxious to overlay the old with the new. It describes a situation where if one knows the place well, one would find the cultural and spiritual crossroads which represent, on the one hand, a clinging to tradition, and on the other, a desire to adapt to newer norms because the old order has become inadequate. The contestation which takes place between these two constituencies can be observed in the way of life which is on the one hand basic and on the other open to change. Yet the people negotiate their material life, coaxing and creating utility from the surroundings. As vitally important as food, it's shelter, and humans everywhere have conceived different ways of protecting themselves by using materials they find around them. In fact, the very basic organizing principle of family life is developed from the concept of the house, the space it uses, and the necessary functions it involves. House construction in these parts is work which involves bringing raw material from the outlying jungles. Timber, bamboo, and thatch called trao are brought. Bundles of this species of grass are physically born and kept ready for use. As is expected, the structure is first made so as to get a sense of size and space. Then the trao is used to create the roof. This job requires great skill, as it involves precision in laying the roofing material and fastening it to the structure with finely cut bamboo strips. The process is repeated till the entire span is suitably covered. The roof is a crucial section of the house, as it is exposed to inclement weather throughout the year. Its making and design should make it resistant to stormy showers and the often accompanying hailstones. It also has to preserve warmth during the cold months and still provide air conditioning when the weather becomes oppressive during summer. The completion of roofing is an auspicious occasion 
and in the olden days, it meant a ceremonial celebration. Now, it is simply marked by the making of a design using surplus bamboo strips. This design is fastened to the front end of the spine of the hut. The ends of the roof are trimmed uniformly, marking the end of the work. While the huts are designed to function as living and working spaces, there is also a sense of aesthetics, which comes naturally to folk who live in close proximity with nature. The front yard is organized into sections where small gardens are found and well-designed fences provided by the abundance of bamboo makes houses pretty pictures. Privacy is maintained through separation of compounds marked by simple green enclosures, firewood sheds, and other utility spaces. It is also common practice for the people to create homes for birds in the makeshift nests placed atop trees, and different birds are reported to make these their home. But one can also sense a narrative of transformation that is playing its role in these places. Government intervention to provide roofing material is also readily accepted, and many of these CGI sheets are replacing the thatch. The home is also a symbol of hospitality. It is designed to receive guests and visitors who are welcomed with short stools called kiknor. Along with the knor, the customary betel nut and leaves are offered. Visits such as this one facilitate closeness and the exchange of information. The knor is an item devoid of design or ornamentation. It is simply made from slabs of wood and fashioned into shape using the basic nail and hammer. The manifestation of cultural traditions are not only imbued in the loftier heights of worldviews and philosophy, delicate arts and crafts, but in the homelier ambience of cuisine and culinary skills. The hearth, represented by Kimao Bursil, which are three stones placed in a triangular formation, is the focal point of most household activities. In some Bohoi households, such as this one, it is still possible to see items being prepared in earthen pots and bamboo tubes. The hearth is usually kept busy almost throughout the day as preparation of many kinds are made for those members of the house who are yet to come back from their business. The existence of the Mabursil also describes the warmth of tradition, and along with these ingredients stored in a bamboo container becomes symbolic of the quintessential life of rural boy. Here we see a delicacy called kapurnga being made, Bamboo tubes are also used as effective storing devices of seeds and dried bamboo shoot. These tubes are tucked between the bamboo rafters that hold up the roof. A favorite curry is the jajo, 
which is a species of leaf producing a sour taste. It is interesting to note that any vegetable with the prefix of ja is considered edible, and research has listed not less than a hundred of these usually wild vegetables existing in Kasi and Jaintia Hills. The jajo leaves are separated from the stem and they are cut into small pieces. Meanwhile, water is boiled and dried fish mixed with chili added to the water. Then the jajo is added to the pot. Sesame seeds are also added through the preparation and stirred. This is what it looks like when it's ready. Contentment brought on by a settled and sedentary lifestyle encourages a whole range of activities and creative expressions which inspire humans to turn their hands into useful tools of bringing into form and shape things designed to be socially useful and aesthetically pleasing. In this manner, material culture as a genre of creativity and activity offers excellent opportunity for conceiving and deploying innovation because it is directly linked to the notion of self-sustenance. This notion has been developed by the different communities through the judicious and imaginative use of natural products. The generation of cultural ideas and tradition generated through human-made objects. The availability of a wide range of bamboo species provides the people with the opportunity to make use of this ubiquitous giant grass and turn it into household items used for various purposes. Specifically designed baskets are used for fish traps. Some are used as grain containers. This other one is used for storing assorted things, while the paron is used by anglers to keep fish they have caught. The conical basket is the ko, while the ro is the bird cage. Katrab is a very special basket which is big in size and is made to store clothes. Before clothes are put in it, a simple jan krsha, or traditional apron, is used to line the trap. Then fine clothes, which are worn on special occasions, are kept inside. The lid of the trap, also made of bamboo, is put into place and secured with a rope. The basket is then taken and suspended in a corner of the house. Household activity gives us the opportunity to see the versatility of bamboo basketry. And here we watch the rounded winnowing basket being manipulated very deftly to separate edible rice grain from the chaff. Bhoi women do not hesitate from taking to manual labor and actually using tools that require great physical exertion. Chopping dried bamboo collected as fuel is a chore which requires daily attention. After that, the floor is kept impeccable again when she uses a broomstick and the bholok. One of the attractions of these bhoi villages is the rhythmic nature of life. It throbs and pulsates with music and the people express this in colorful ways. The mun is a tiny instrument made from slivers of bamboo. Its tongue forms part of a frame which produces a twanging sound when manipulated with a string attached to it. Purnap or arum is a delicacy, the preparation of which requires the following items. Purnap leaves, salt, dried fermented fish, turmeric, chili, and sesame seeds. The purnap leaves are finely cut. 
and cooked in a pot, the quarter of which is filled with water. Then the seasoning ingredients are added one by one. 